According to an article published in Britannica Biographies, published in March of 2012 and written by Raz Russo Michael, Jenny Holzer was born July 29, 1950, in Gallipolis, Ohio. She initially aspired to be an abstract painter, and her journey into her art career began in 1968 when she took general art courses at Duke University. In 1972, she got her Bachelor's of Fine Arts at Ohio University. Three years later, in 1975, she got her Master's of Fine Arts at Rhode Island School of Design. Lastly, in 1977, she began an independent study program at the Whitney Museum of American Art, which was the time period where she began her interest in social and cultural theory that would later become her truisms, a series of short, concise slogans anonymously posted on posters plastered around Manhattan. There are many messages and main ideas behind Jenny Halzer and the work she creates. The basis of her work is words and language, which to her is the only precise way to be explicit about things. Some words are borrowed, some words are original, but all of them aim to cover a vast and wide spectrum of viewpoints. Holzer's intention is to more accurately portray people's beliefs. With her truisms, for example, each slogan was printed the same size and the same font on the same paper. In an interview with Alan G. Artner, published in the Chicago Tribune in November of 2008, Holzer talks about the purpose behind her work. She says, I thought it could be interesting and potentially useful for people to read through many different beliefs and sort out what one does when one notices they conflict, because that could stand in for how to govern oneself or a group of people. I didn't want to preach, so I'd throw out hundreds of statements equally weighted and would invite people to sort through. The equal weight of each slogan that she produced shows no preferential treatment. They are all presented as equal, and it is up to the audience to decide where they fall. Anonymity was also a recurring theme in the beginning of Halzer's career because it was a way to reduce or eliminate bias. She was very aware that if she posted her work with her name attached to it, it would be judged accordingly to her identity. So, she chose to disguise her identity. There was no fame, there was no gender, there was no success. In an article written by Leah Pyers, published in October of 2018 in the Art in America magazine, Holzer lets us in her brain a bit more in depth when she says, I always try to make my voice unidentifiable. I wouldn't want it to be isolated as a woman's voice because I found that when things are categorized, they tend to be dismissed. I find it better to have no particular association attached to the voice in order for it to be perceived as true. Yet I do want my voice to be heard, and yes, it's a woman's voice. Holzer's work is a way to explore contemporary issues from politics to rape culture. Her work has been deemed reminiscent of tweets from a certain politician and her work has also been borrowed to use as the leading slogan for the Me Too movement. Though the years attached to her works have only grown, her words can still seem relevant in today's society and culture. Holzer also aims to question the relationship with what is private and with what is public with her work. For example, her redaction painting series in 2008 featured declassified government documents about the horrible things being done in America's name in Iraq and Afghanistan. Regardless of the words and their intended message, Jenny has a multitude of means to getting her work out there. Initially, she began putting posters up in public places, which wasn't quick, but it was simple. But her works have found themselves everywhere now, from t-shirts to tractor hats, from LED signs and projections, from the Times Square billboard to a bronze engraved park bench, from a sticker on a garbage can to silkscreen canvases, and even a race car for BMW. She always keeps her designs simple so as to not deter and distract from the words and their message. Naturally, when reading these words, we will come to form our own opinions. With creating contemporary art, there comes controversy, a not unknown subject to Jenny Holzer. Her work has been many times deemed controversial due to their increasingly volatile subject matter, like war, violence, racism, rape, sex, disease, birth, and death, according to an article written by Patrick J.B. Flynn and published in a magazine called Progressive. One text in particular under the 1986 series titled Under a Rock read, Crack the pelvis so she lies right. This is a mistake. When she dies, you cannot repeat the act. The bones will not grow together again and the personality will not come back. 
She is going to sink deep into the moss to get white and lighter. She is unresponsive to begging and self-absorbed. When Holzer created that inscription on a park bench, she kept in mind a Kathy Callwitz drawing of a woman, legs spread laying in the forest who had been raped and murdered. Another example of one of her works that deals with controversial subject matters is Lust Mord, which she created in 1993. Lust Mord is a German word that describes a sexual murder, usually involving a rape. This project started when Holzer was asked by a large German magazine company to create a piece for them. Here is where the controversy comes in. Holzer created the several pieces that make up Lust Mord in response to the systematic sexual violence and rapes against women and young girls during the Bosnian War. This piece consisted of several mediums, including LED signs reading poems about a sex crime from the perspectives of the victim, the perpetrator, and an outside observer. Holzer also took the words of these poems and wrote them on women's skin in regular ink and blood ink. Later on, she had the text engraved on silver bands that were wrapped around real human bones and laid upon an old beaten table, which later became known as the Bones Table, according to an interview conducted with Alan G. Artner with the Chicago Tribune, published in two November of 2008. In that interview, Holzer herself calls it an awful piece, but felt it was necessary to be so literal, considering she was describing crimes against the human body. With being an outspoken woman in the second decade of the 21st century, it is natural for feminism to sometimes become the looming elephant in the room. Holzer doesn't necessarily see it that way, though. In an article self-titled by Patrick J.B. Flynn, she talks about how she sees herself as a woman, some of which are subjected to enough on a daily basis to understand victimization. But she also sees herself as an overprivileged white woman who cannot claim ultimate victim status. Her writing could come from the standpoint of a victim or a perpetrator. Remember, her ultimate goal is to cover all perspectives. These are her best attempts of an honest portrayal of the world. Another area of skepticism and criticism of Holzer is the central theme to her work, words. It has been brought up by critics and viewers alike that they believe Jenny is dealing in a quote-unquote journalist's arena, and it has spawned the question, what role do words play in an art museum? Holzer can appreciate the sincere criticism, though. She acknowledges she is not the best writer and her writing can use improvement. However, to the notion that words don't belong in an art museum, Holzer admits it seems ridiculous to her. She believes that when creating art, one should have the freedom to whatever they think is appropriate. Let's go a little more in depth about truisms. Lasting from 1977 until 1987, Holzer's truisms are nearly 300 text-based artworks, which are a compilation of ideological positions wrapped up into slogans. Her goal was to take complex ideas and make them more simple, according to an article with Alan G. Artner in the Chicago Tribune. In one version, they were printed on cheap paper and wheat posted to walls and lampposts alphabetically across New York neighborhoods. She began writing these when she was a student at Whitney Museum of American Art. Initially, it started as a sort of self-help project. Jenny would take the giant reading list required by her program of study and boil each book down to a sort of one-liner. One could call it egalitarian in nature. She had left-wing slogans, she had right-wing slogans, and she had everything in between. This was Holzer's way to hold no judgment. She treated both sides of the spectrum equally in terms of visuals and with respect. Nothing is bolded, so nothing sticks out. In presenting ideas in this manner, it invites the viewer to come to their own conclusions. As you have heard, Jenny Holzer's art has many different interdisciplinary connections. Her use of words, language, and poetry can easily find themselves falling into a literature or English class. There is also a bit of sociology and psychology involved in the terms of responses people would give, as well as how she used to people watch to see their reactions firsthand. Holzer also finds her writings mixed up with politics as well in many different ways. Her redacted painting series dealt with politics and war firsthand considering she used materials made available through the Freedom of Information Act, which is discussed in a Kathy Lebowitz article published in Art in America in October of 2016. Her work can also be political in nature due to what she chooses to respond to, as well as how her work can be picked up and used for social movements. The collective 
We Are Not Surprised Move It in 2017, which responded to sexual abuse and harassment of a former art forum publisher, named their group after Holzer's first truism, Abuse of Power Comes as No Surprise, with her permission, of course. This is what I find so interesting about her work, that Holzer can create art that touches all areas of life. The pieces she creates are not confined to an art museum, but rather can be seen by an average individual on a park bench or even in Times Square. I find her work inspiring and something to look up to, considering I myself use words as a form of self-expression. To me, what makes Holzer so unique is her ability to put aside her own biases in order to make sure her portrayal of the world is fair. She may have her own qualms about what her art responds to, but she ensures that all views, whether they align with hers or not, are put out into the world.